Hello and welcome to Watch Mentor. I'm uh, Nick and today we're diving into another episode and uh, this time on a fascinating technical topic and one that more and more buyers are starting to pay attention to. So since this topic is quite technical, I did not want to rely only on theory and uh, that's why I have brought with me this machine that honestly looks like it belongs into a hospital. But what is this machine used for and how does it really work? This machine is called a time grapher and as the name suggests it measures a watch's accuracy. So you might wonder how does it know if a watch is fast or slow. Now this machine is equipped with its own super stable quartz clock which is uh, even more precise than uh, the one in the quartz watch. To be more uh, specific uh, this quartz inside the time grapher vibrates over 32,000 times per second letting it uh, measure time down to a tiny fraction of a millisecond. To help you understand this better, think of the inner quartz clock of the time grapher as a benchmark because based on your watch's uh, beat rate it knows uh, how many ticks there should be per second and uh, how evenly they should be spaced. So what you see here is uh, called the clamp. Uh, this clamp has a built-in microphone and uh, this microphone listens to the ticks of your watch and uh, compares it uh, to the internal clock. This sound then is translated and displayed visually into three key stats. Two of uh, which brands uh, usually never reveal, yet are very crucial. So that's why online accuracy numbers are only a small part of the big picture. But nevertheless, I would say let's start by looking first at uh, accuracy itself, what it really means and also explain why this signal metric alone does not tell you the full story about your watch's accuracy. So now let's place the watch on the clamp with the built-in mic I mentioned earlier and uh, once the machine records the sound you will see a line appear on the screen. So looking at the screen we see a lot of information but uh, for now let's focus uh, on the line which basically shows if the watch is running too fast or too slow, meaning if the line is going up the watch is too fast and if the line goes down it means the watch is too slow. But keep in mind what you're seeing right now is uh, just a real time measurement in a single position. So it doesn't tell you much about the watch's overall accuracy and here's why. First of all what we see here is a real time measurement that does uh, not take into account the conditions a watch faces when it's actually worn. So what we see here uh, shows how well the watch runs in this exact position, in this exact moment and uh, under this exact circumstances. It means it does not uh, represent a real life scenario. So that's why later uh, when we do the final test I will show you how we uh, account for this challenge and make sure the results reflect real life conditions as closely as possible. For now we know how many seconds per day the watch runs in this exact position and I know you might think that's all but it's not because this doesn't show you how much energy the movement gets or how evenly it runs. Stats uh, brands never reveal and are super important as we'll see now. Now to help you understand the amplitude think of it like a playground swing because when you give it a good push it swings high to one side then all the way back to the other side and the wider the swing the more energy the system has. So in watch terms a higher amplitude which is measured in degree means more energy is delivered to power the watch. So basically this stat tells us uh, how far the balance wheel swings from one side to the other before it changes direction. Now what we also check is whether the amplitude stays stable or similar no matter the position of the watch because for instance when a watch is flat the balance wheel doesn't have to fight extra gravitational forces so getting a good amplitude is usually not a problem. But it gets tricky when we turn the watch into a vertical position uh, because then we often see a sudden drop in the amplitude because the balance wheel now faces additional forces from gravity and the loss of power happens. And that's why amplitude is so important because it shows how efficiently energy flows through the movement both in general and depending on the position the watch is worn. Now besides amplitude and the energy delivered we also want to look at how evenly the watch runs which is measured and shown as the so-called beat error and is another key metric I want to explain 
because together with the other two it forms the holy trinity of watch measurements. The beat error is important because it tells us how balanced the movement is and shows how evenly the escapement ticks back and forth. Ideally, each tick should take the same amount of time, which is measured in milliseconds and if the ticks are even, it would be displayed 0.0 milliseconds, means there is no difference between the two ticks and each one takes exactly the same amount of time. To put this into perspective and why this is an important stat, Think of it like the human heartbeat, because in a healthy heart, uh, each beat happens at uh, perfectly regular intervals. The timing between them is consistent. Now, the same principle applies to a mechanical watch. If the beats aren't evenly spaced, it indicates an imbalance in uh, how the movement operates. And uh, just like with the heart, when that rhythm is off, known as arrhythmia, it affects how well it functions. So up to this point, we have looked at the three essential metrics, how the watch's accuracy is measured, how efficient the energy flow is, and how even the watch is ticking. What we have done so far was just to show the stats, but as I said earlier, this is not how the watch behaves in real life. So that's why we're going to do a quick test and see what really happens and how we take real life scenarios into account. So as you know, you will never wear a watch all day in a single position because depending on the position, gravity affects its performance, uh, as I explained earlier, which means we need to take uh, this into account and is the reason why we test the watch in different uh, positions and usually uh, with the dial up, dial down, crown down, crown up, crown right and crown left. Now, we let the program test each position for a certain time and once the test is done, we get a printout of all the results. So looking at the printout at first, it might look confusing, but uh, let's go through the most important sets and explain what they mean. On the left side of the printout, we see the three key figures for each position and uh, these are the average values recorded during the test. Now, there are two positions we really want to focus on first. The one with the biggest gain in seconds per day, in this case, crown right at plus one seconds per day. And uh, the other one with the biggest loss in seconds per day, which is dial up at uh, minus six uh, seconds per day. And by the way, this is uh, usually what brands communicate. And that's pretty much it. And yes, as you see, it does not really say that much about the watch accuracy alone. So this difference between the biggest gain and the, the biggest loss in seconds per day uh, shows how much the accuracy changes between positions. And uh, in this case, we would have a delta of 6.9 seconds, meaning the watch doesn't vary more than that between its best and worst position, which in this case is uh, quite stable. Now we want also to do the same and check how good the amplitude and the flow of energy is. So if we look at the printout, we see we have the amplitude for each position shown next to the accuracy on the second row. We see the highest amplitude is at dial down at 301 degrees, which is uh, excellent and usually expected for a flat position. And we also see the lowest amplitude here is crown up at 271 degrees and uh, already see how in this case uh, gravity affects the amplitude. So from the highest at 301 degree to the lowest at 271, the difference is uh, just about 30 degrees, which is a quite low difference and means the watch gets nearly the same amount of power, no matter the position. Finally, the last important step we want to check is the beat error, which uh, I explained earlier. And in this case, it is uh, between 0.0, .0 and 0.1 milliseconds and also quite excellent because it means the watch runs smoothly in every position resulting in a delta of, uh, of the beat error of just 0.1 milliseconds. So we have covered the, the three most important stats in this test but there is a problem. Uh, all the positions uh, have been measured for the same amount of time which uh, doesn't reflect how the watch behaves when worn. I mean no one wears their watch for the same amount of time in each position throughout the day. So that's why after this initial test, we move on to what's called a long-term test. And uh, unlike the short measurements we just did, this test uh, takes into account how the watch behaves over a longer period 
and in real life conditions, and here's how it works. So to simulate real life scenarios, or at least uh, get as close as possible, we will put the watch fully wound on a winder for 24 hours, whether it's a hand wound or automatic watch uh, to mimic how it would be worn. Once the 24 hours have passed, we perform the same test on the machine again to compare the results and see if there's any difference from the initial measurement after we simulated real-time wearing. And you know, this is especially important with hand wound movements as it shows how the watch performs after 24 hours when the power reserve is running low and uh, the watch no longer has the full energy available. But this 24 hour test is also important for automatic movements because it allows us to check whether the winding system is working properly and if the watch was actually wound while it was on the winder. So yes, this is basically how it's usually done. Of course, some brands or watchmakers might do it slightly different, but the main idea is the same. And it's also worth uh, mentioning that some brands have uh, much stricter guidelines, but what I showed you today gives you an idea of how much is actually behind the stats brands usually communicate. So what's the conclusion here and do the stats the brands communicate really matter? And what's important to pay attention to when buying a watch? So in this regard, I have to say, you never really know how these watches were tested or under what conditions. And uh, as you have seen, that matters a lot. At the end of the day, all we can really do is trust the numbers brands communicate and hope these tests were done properly and with integrity. But it is also important to understand that uh, the results they show you are from tests done before the watch ever reaches your wrist. And from that moment on, so much can change. Because the watch is shipped, handled by multiple people, displayed in stores and passed around from one hand to another. And uh, all of that affects uh, its performance, uh, as I have seen countless times myself. That's why I always recommend asking the seller to quickly put the watch on a timing machine before you buy it. It uh, takes just a moment and it tells you uh, how the watch is really running right now, not uh, months ago in some testing lab. Eventually, despite all of this, uh, we have to remind ourselves that uh, when we buy a mechanical watch, it's not to catch the bus or train on the second, it's because of the experience it offers, something no other type of watch can give you. With that said, it's time to wrap up uh, today's episode, uh, a topic that might uh, seem niche, but I have noticed more and more people starting to care about it. And uh, I hope I was able today to have introduced you to something new and exciting. If you have any questions about this or if there is a topic you would like me to cover, let me know at any time. I'm always curious to see what you're into. And uh, if you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe for more watchmaking related content. But for now, thank you for tuning in today and as always, stay blessed and see you next time.